Sky and welcome to Hudson Europa League Second Leg, last 16 round. Dani Fisiquela and Álvaro Romeo with us. Hello, guys, to analyze these very interesting games. Uh, we had uh, a good week. Uh, so remember, of course, to press the like, subscribe to our channel, and leave the comments below. We always read your comments, your tips, your suggestions. And hopefully we can have a successful week uh, with these games uh, starting on uh, Thursday. Of course, all the games are going to be on Thursday, quarter uh, to seven, uh, Central European time. Fenerbahce, Sevilla, Álvaro, we have Sevilla. I'm not sure if they want to focus in the Europa League, but if they keep winning at home, why not? Why not keep uh, dreaming with uh, doing something big in their competition? In uh, La Liga, luckily, they won at home against Almeria, suffering a lot because remember that they are fighting against relegation, but it looks like the competition uh, Europa League is good for them. Perhaps, Álvaro, we see a similar game as we saw in Eindhoven, Sevilla trying to defend this 2-0 and Fenerbahce hitting and hitting them and Sevilla suffering. I think so. I think so. That's why the positive facing handicaps for Sevilla are something are something that is something that caught my eye from the very beginning because I think that uh, Sevilla may suffer here. Of course, they won in the first leg, 2-0. Mm, I think that Sevilla at home, they are doing very well. And that's the reason why they are a, a little bit far from relegation right now in La Liga. And that's why the reason why they are in this stage of the Europa League. But if it was for their away home, Sevilla could be probably uh, a club in liquidation right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for the exaggeration, but the truth is that look <laughs> yes. at their numbers uh, away from home. Sevilla, this season, they have uh, won only two games in La Liga away from home, and they haven't won a single game in Europe away from home. On top of that, in Sevilla, they haven't won away in 10 European games on the road. Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's incredible because this is a Sevilla side that, you know, I think that in Europe we consider them decent enough to go to any ground at least and at least to put a competitive fight but this season they haven't done it really they drew with Dortmund uh, in the Champions League in the group stage but Dortmund was already pretty much qualified then they couldn't beat Copenhagen in the Champions League away and now you know they are playing against the Fenerbahce I think that Sevilla will go through personally but I think that this game may resemble very much the game against PSV uh, I agree with you Edu. that's why I could go for an Asian handicap of plus 0 0.25 for Sevilla in the first half which pays 161 that uh, very quickly means that if they win the first half you win it and if they draw in the first half you get only half a win or maybe a plus 0 0.75 at the end of the game uh, basically if they draw or if they win you win your bet, and if they lose by one, you get or you suffer only half a lose. I mean, I could mm, I could be uh, happy in those two parameters, uh, more or less, but if I have to go for the scoring market, I think both these two scores may happen here. May happen here. That will pay 1.8, because at some point Fenerbahce will have to you know, spread out and go forward because Fenerbahce has good forwards as well, good strikers. So a team that has the likes of Batshuayi, Joshua King or Ener Valencia can score any time. And maybe Sevilla in the counter-attack can score a goal too. So 1.8 for both teams to score. I like it here. And Sevilla, Dani, they are very stingy, cautious, yes. uh, very are afraid every time they play away in Europe. Last season they were kicked out by West Ham playing in this way, not playing. No, I think uh, in the first leg, you know, Fenerbahce had the better chances as well, especially with Joshua King. Uh, Sevilla were lucky to keep the clean sheet. I know they are unbeaten in 19 uh, Europa League knockout games, but, you know, Fenerbahce really uh, did everything for them to score. And they do have goal scorers there, you know, also in Valencia as well. So I think it's going to be going to be difficult for them. They're fifth for attempt on target, Fenerbahce, on the Europa League, more than Arsenal and Feyenoord. They did not play at the weekend. They're second behind mm -hmm. Galatasaray. I think they're going to be fired up for this one. And as I mentioned, you know, in the pre in the previous video we did, the for the first leg, I said, if Sevilla doesn't win the first leg at the Sanchez pitch one, they're going to go out. They won it. I think they'll qualify here, but they're going to find it very hard. I think it's going to be an over 2.5 goals. I can see perhaps both to score, but Fenerbahce had to hit Sevilla at least once. Over 2.5 goals pays really well, 209. Also, but one Fener thing, uh, yeah. Sevilla is not unbeaten in the last 19 knockouts. 
Danny, well, it's right? qualified. It's qualified. It's qualified. No, but but they. Uh, sorry, example, sorry, sorry. They lost home. against West Ham. No apologies. It's been unbeaten in nineteen knockout mm. at home. At home. Ah, all right, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Well, Fenerbahce to win, by the way, is 2.54. I really like these odds. 2-0 uh, for Sevilla. We have a 1-all in the Feyenoord Shakhtar Dones with Feyenoord top of the Eredivisie. Strong at home also in Europe, beating Lazio, for instance, or Stungrath. And with Shakhtar, Dani, you never know. It's a team that is surprising <laughs> us. They also, for instance, gained their qualification to this round uh, in Gan. Uh, would you go for a surprise, for instance, for Shakhtar? The odds are very good for Shakhtar backing them somehow. 7.2, mm -hmm. the Ukrainian team to win. I'm afraid, I'm afraid I'm not going to go for Shakhtar because in the first leg, Feyenoord really should have won it. They should have finished the job. They created more. They even had a goal disallowed at the end. And the, if, if you look at the Shakhtar's goal, Ratzinski is almost with his backside from a corner. He kneels over, the ball hits him on the of the backside and loops over the goalkeeper. And that's how they took the lead. It was really, really lucky. And I think Feyenoord are, are, are a better side, as you mentioned. You know, they emerged top uh, from a group with Lazio. It was difficult as well. They beat them when they needed to. Shakhtar only won two of the last 16 European games. And in some of those games, they created a lot of chances, but they didn't convert them against Feyenoord. They didn't create much. I think they've been admirable. They've been a great story, but I think it's going to be the end of the road for them. Feyenoord are unbeaten in 19 games. They won at the weekend 2-1 against Follendam. They are plus three on Ajax. By the way, on Sunday, they play Ajax. If they win that one, probably they clinch the title. I think they're going to go through. And I'm going to go with an Asian handicap minus one for the Dutch side. 188. I think it's a very, it's a very good uh, return. If they win by one goal, don't worry, because you get your money back. Oh, so sure. And we've seen Shakhtar, for instance, playing well and winning uh, against Leipzig or playing well at Bernabeu yeah, yeah. or qualifying in Gan in <laughs> Rasan Park. Never easy, Alvaro. Any chance for Shakhtar? Why not? Never easy, Edu, but... Uh... I'm going to go for Shakhtar because I think yeah. the good money is there. I remember once uh, in June 2022, I backed Croatia against France away from home and that worked for me. And ever since then, uh, I thought, okay, you know, in these ties in which I don't think that Feyenoord is that, that, that favorite because it's not uh, Real Madrid we're talking about here. Why not to think that, uh, you know, Shakhtar may have a chance. If you don't want to back them um, to win the game. For example, a double a double chance for them pays 2.7. And you know, I agree with Daniel. Feyenoord is a better side and they have many Much more better. chances in the in the first game. But at the same time, there is a, an element of survivor in Shakhtar that I really appreciate. And I think that in the Champions League in the group stage, they competed very commendably. And I do believe that here they could compete. Why not? Um, and I am totally aware of a few facts. Number one, that Feyenoord haven't lost at home this season. That uh, they beat Lazio here 1-0, which is like a really good precedent for them. And also, Mm, they have been only scoreless in two games this season, which is incredible. They are a side that score a lot of goals. Only Herenben at the beginning of the season and Sturm Graf were capable of keeping Feyenoord scoreless in a game. But I'm going to back Shakhtar just because the money is excellent. And I think that Feyenoord is not Real Madrid, it's not Liverpool, it's not a side that you should trust 100% at home to win. So Shakhtar to qualify... Uh, sorry, Shakhtar to win 7.5, fine with me. But Shakhtar to qualify, 420, I like it too. We should trust uh, a team like Juventus. Uh, ah. Game is uh, Freiburg Juve, and he's saying, ah, but uh, ah. you were very sure that they were going to knock out uh, and kick out Nantes from the competition. They won in La Bojoie, 3-0, and now they have a good result, 1-0. They still have to fight, of course, uh, in uh, Freiburg, but uh, Freiburg is a very good home side in Germany. Alvaro, only one defeat this season, huh? Yeah, and I think that they, they can make it difficult for everyone, of course. Uh, I think that this um, this tie is not going to be easy for Juve. Um, in fact, I'm not going to back them to win. I just think that the draw no bet for Juventus is something that looks to me like conservative enough. And uh, when it comes to the return of money, it's good enough, 162. Uh, because the game is not going to be easy. But at the same time, I think that Juve is going to make it just because they, they need to... To, to win this Europa League more than anyone else. And uh, in fact, 
I would say more. I think that if they qualify for the quarterfinals, they will autom automatically be the favorites to win the competition or together with Arsenal and Manchester United. Uh, and it's going to be between these three to win the competition, really. Um, I know I'm aware about the dangers of Freiburg, but I still believe that in this kind of games, the good players step up. And for example, Angel Di Maria is stepping a lot in this Europa League for Juventus. A lot, a lot, a lot. And the other day, he scored the winning goals as well. I don't know if Di Maria is going to be totally fit for the game, though. That has to be confirmed, but maybe Daniele has more news about that. Uh, Federico Chiesa, I don't think that he's going to be ready for this game either, but I think that Juventus has all the squad and even the style and the makings to get something positive from this game, wrap it up and qualify for the next round. So, draw no bet for Juve, 162. Danny Fisichella has all the news from Juventus training ground. That's why he's not that sure about this Juventus uh, <laughs> qualifying in Freiburg. I think Juve is going to qualify here because uh, Juve lately have been, have been good. I mean, you have, really have to define what good means because, I mean, at the end of the day against Roma when they lost 1-0, they were a little bit disappointed. But since they got the minus 15 in the Serie A, their games have been much more entertaining. I don't know if something kicked on. They decided to go for it. They took a little bit of cautious away. Some of the good players are it form. I mean, Quadrado and Kostic are in great form. They provide assists and almost score pretty much every day. Rabio has been, has been excellent this season. Other two goals at the weekend. Allegri has been able also to uh, get the young players in, the likes of Fagioli, Maretti, Ealing, who scored at the weekend. You know, there's been a lot of positive things. The only negative from this, from the Juventus is that they basically haven't seen Paul Pogba, who's now is injured. And the week back before... In April. The back in April, the week before, after he was back, he decided to arrive late, so they left him out of the squad. I mean, it's been it's been a big flop, really. Uh, also because of players' fault, I think he should he should have gone through surgery at the beginning of the season, but you know, and then then he missed the World Cup anyway. But they're in good form. I mean, they're creating more. Uh, they are more solid. They score from free kick, from set pieces. They look much more complete. And in terms of squad. I think uh, in this Europa League, as a depth of the squad, they are second to none. Um, and they managed in the first leg to keep Freiburg quiet. You know, Freiburg has been a very attacking side, especially in the Europa League. Uh, now, the fact that Allegri has made a couple of changes and turnover at the weekend, he's left Locatelli out for the first half against Sampdoria, tells you that obviously he wants to play his best 11 here. It's going to be difficult uh, for Juve, who have a striker who's a desperate for a goal, Vlaovic. He's not been scoring for a while. He missed a penalty against Sampdoria, but he does get into the good position, create chances. You can see the hunger. You know, maybe that could be the day. I think uh, I think Vlaovic has not become a bad player out of a sudden. He needs to get his confidence up a little bit more. But, you know, Freiburg, unbeaten in 15 games at home. Only defeats of the season came in August 2-1 against Borussia Dortmund. They were a little bit timid in Torino, and I think they're going to go for it. Juventus back line, I always said that if you follow my Serie A show, I don't think it's nothing special with the three Brazilians playing there, and I think they're going to concede, but I think they're going to score. I cannot see really Juventus drawing a blank in Germany. Both to score for me here, 2-12. It's a very, very, very good odds. But yeah, I would be pretty sure Juventus is going to go through. Well, third favorite, uh, Juventus to win the competition. Uh, by the way, the main uh, favorite is Man United, yeah. of course, after the 4-1 that they got in uh, Old Trafford against uh, Betis. This should be an easy one, a uh, walk in the park, perhaps, for Man United. But I'm sure it's going to be a great atmosphere in Seville uh, to see Betis playing a great European side. But the problem, Danny, is that Betis, they are not great lately. They don't have Fekir. They are not winning in La Liga. And uh, they were way worse than uh, Man United in the first leg. Totally, Man United deserve it to win. They wrap it up pretty much in the first leg. So, yeah, they're going to go through. And they come at the back of two disappointing results in, in the league because of the 7 0 defeat at Manchester United, not only for the scoreline, but for the fact that they couldn't react in the second half after conceding the third goal. And the 0 0 against both on the table, Southampton, who, by the way, had the best chances at Old Trafford. Man of the match, De Gea, for sure. United seemed a little bit confused. They didn't really get into a good rhythm. They didn't create chances. Then, obviously, Casemiro was sent off. Of play with 10 men. 
obviously this affected I think I feel in the second half in the second half when Casemiro was off Den Haag didn't want to risk it especially because they came on the back of a 7-0 defeat they were almost happy and content to stay nil nil and maybe nick a goal at the end but they didn't really go for it because losing back to back games in the Premier League especially against the bottom of the table at home it would have been too much so they were pretty content with that but you know Manchester United are going to finish in the top four which was the objective of the season so good season overall and a few players who have been rejuvenated Marcus Rashford scored 26 goals this season as many as in the previous two seasons together and obviously Sancho as well has been I think fairly recovered from his uh, bad form and issues outside of the pitch. But, you know, Betis had chances at, at Old Trafford. They would be unhappy because they gave the ball away cheaply. But again, I saw a couple of good saves from De Gea there. Uh, strangely enough, uh, for Manchester United, this is the last game until April, because then they got a break. They don't play in the FA Cup. There is the international break. So it's the last game in a while. So will they do turnover? I don't think so. I think they can go even with the with most of the strongest 11 there. And I think it's going to be goals here. Over 2.5 goals, 193. Well, Man United, they play on Sunday in the FA Cup uh, quarterfinals against uh, Fulham. Yes. So I know, they, yes, that's right. Yeah, they play, they play yeah, on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. The Premier League is almost over for them. They are going to qualify for the Champions League. As you said, Danny, they are not going to win the title. Right. So I, confused them with, I confused them with Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Liverpool uh, don't, don't play in a while. But yeah, Manchester United do, do play, of course, on Sunday. Yeah. So that's why Alvaro, uh, perhaps they do actually turn over because they have Fulham yeah, <laughs> in the FA Cup. And this is important. This is perhaps why Betis could have a chance here because Man United can be relaxed uh, for this game. But Betis, uh, oof, I wouldn't put my money on Betis right now. Eh? No, and I don't think Manchester United will will play with 11 unknowns. I think that they will stay uh, still um, feel the competitive lineup for this game. And they are obviously not only the, five, the favorites to qualify, but uh, I can understand why they are considered the favorites to win the competition, even though I think that Arsenal has even something else than Manchester United right now. But I did like what Eric Ten Hag did against Betis last Thursday in Old Trafford. He basically uh, named an unchanged 11 uh, from the 7-0 defeat against Liverpool because he wanted his players, the ones that... They, suffered the defeat just to prove uh, their worth and they beat Betis not super comfortably but uh, with the competence and the professionalism of the good sides I think that the, one of the main difference between Betis and Manchester United is that Betis is a slightly toothless in the opponent's box and in their own box whereas Manchester United is on right the opposite they've got Marcus Rashford scoring plenty of goals Bruno Fernandes he is uh, probably the most deadly midfielder in the world in terms of scoring goals and then in defense with Lisandro and Pagan I mean they know that they've got uh, two quality center backs as well mm -hmm. and Betis is missing a little bit of that they've got a very good style even in the weekend they drew with Villarreal in a very entertaining game Borja Iglesias scored uh, but you could see that uh, they are missing something uh, they don't have the most quality players especially um, in the centre-back positions as well. And I do believe that uh, physically they are not as strong as Manchester United. The squad of Betis is rather aged, and that's why sometimes when you see a player like Luis Enrique, the right winger, just running a lot, uh, he catches your attention straight away because the rest of Betis players are rather a little bit immobile and more positional. Uh, but here Manchester United shouldn't have a problem. Uh, you know, I think that Betis can score three goals. Yes, they can. And if they score three goals and they beat Manchester United... 3-0, there will be at least an extra time this season, in this 20, in 2023, sorry, they have scored three goals in three games, yes, but in those games in which they score three goals, they consider two, four, and two. So even when they score three, which will be good against Manchester United, they concede quite a lot. So I'm going to go for both teams to score, 175. Daniel said uh, over 2.5 goals, and it's fantastic too. Um, and a double chance for Betis, maybe just because they play at home and, you know, a draw would be very satisfying on a one, uh, I don't know, a 2-1 win, for example. A double chance for Betis pays 181, but I prefer to stay with both teams to score. Very difficult uh, for Betis uh, to have even a chance, I would say, against uh, Man United. If I had to watch only one game on this uh, second leg of the Europa League, it would be in the Emirates, Arsenal Sporting, because they are coming from a two-all result uh, in the Jose Albalade in Lisbon. And uh, we don't give a chance to Betis, perhaps, 
we do give some chance to Sporting because Arsenal is focused in the Premier League because Sporting, they are out of the league race in Portugal or is Mission Impossible, Alvaro, for Sporting? Uh, I I am going to back Arsenal, really. I think that the Sporting did very well in the first leg of the competition. Uh, even in the Champions League, I think that they did a very good job. The thing is that they were in a group in which there was no easy game. Uh, all the teams had a very similar level, Frankfurt, Tottenham, Marseille themselves. And at the end, the Sporting Lisbon ended up just uh, dropping to the Europa League. But they did very well. They did very well and they were competitive in most of the games. And even against Arsenal, they managed to beat a one at some point after Paulinho scored in the 55th minute. But after that, you know, Arsenal did what Arsenal does this season. They don't stay behind in the scoreline for a very long time. And after seven minutes, Morita scored an own goal and Arsenal goal, uh, very good uh, to all draw. That gives them plenty of certainties for the second leg. I think that Arsenal is going to qualify. I really think so. Against Fulham the other day, they didn't need more than a first half just to wrap up the game because uh, they beat Fulham 3-0 and the three goals came in the in the first half with Martin Odegaard scoring a beautiful goal, but especially with Martinelli and Trossard just inflicting pain to the back four, sorry, to the back four of Fulham. Uh, Tosina, Darabiollo, uh, couldn't handle uh, Martinelli. Uh, same thing applied uh, to Tete, the right back of Fulham. Uh, Mikel Arteta was very clever to know that the problems of Fulham came in that part of the pitch. So Mikel Arteta is preparing the games fantastically, fantastically. And I think that Arsenal is in a great moment, great mentality. Even they got a goal disallowed after 15 minutes. And six minutes later, Martinelli was scoring the first, sorry, Gabriel Magal Yes, was scoring the first goal of the game. So the mentality of Arsenal is spot on. So Arsenal here to score over 1.5 goals, I like it. It's kind of a safe bet for me. That pays 1.5. But the money is in the following markets. Arsenal to win the second half, 167. I really like this one, and this is my favorite for this game. And there is a slightly more speculative one here, but Arsenal to win at 30 minutes, as they did, for example, against Fulham, 2.4. There is more money, but of course, more speculation. So in my case, I will stay with Arsenal to win the second half, 167. Alvaro is very excited about the Gunners. So are the bookies uh, Arsenal to qualify 1.19, Sporting to qualify 5.2. Do the Portuguese have a chance, Danny? In the I think they do because uh, really the st history of the first leg changed in a minute from when they could potentially go 3-1 up. <laughs> Paulinho missed a glorious chance and then Morita on goal is very unlucky. And I think uh, Sporting kind of highlighted some of the defensive frailties of Arsenal. Recently, they've been uh, a bit sluggish at dealing with balls into the box, like, you know, Bournemouth scored after nine seconds. We saw also Brentford scoring that sort of chaotic goal with Arsenal not very be able to clear the lines. If you look at the first goal, the Sporting scores, you know, nobody picks up the defender who jumps on his own in front of the uh, goalkeeper. So I think uh, they do have the weapons of Sporting to hurt Arsenal, but we do know that Arsenal at home they can make the environment and the atmosphere so good that the, the supporters are so behind, rightfully, to the team that they know they can turn difficult situations around. And Arsenal, you know, when in the league they've been, uh, I mean, in difficult situation, they've been able to manage to win the game against Borson, for example, or when they traveled to Aston Villa a few weeks ago and they were behind, they still managed to win. So um, Arsenal obviously got the belief there. But Sporting, you know, took four points away from uh, from Spurs. They won at the weekend with Boavista 3-0. They are unbeaten in seven. Arsenal defensive record at home is not great. Only three clean sheet in the last 18 home games. I think for Arsenal now, actually, they play three consecutive home games. They got this game against Sporting, and they got Crystal Palace, and they got Leeds. And then obviously all the tough games come and most of them are away, Liverpool and Man City, of course. So it's going to be a fascinating end to the season. Uh, I don't think Sporting are going to get trashed here. They might lose it, but they're not going to be heavily beaten. So I like Asian Andiga Sporting plus 1.25 that plays 208, which means if you win, you win. If they draw, you win. If they lose by one game, one goal, you win half your stake. How good is that? If they lose by more than a goal, of course, 
You lose all of your stake, but I don't think Sport are gonna be trashed here. Mm, good game, this one. Arsenal, Sporting, and perhaps we see Bayer Leverkusen as an outsider of the competition because they perform a miracle in Monaco. They are very much alive. They got a 2-0 victory against Ferenbaros, and now they have to go to Hungary to defend this result. Danny Ferenbaros, usually they are good at home, even if they lost uh, at the weekend against a team that I like the name, eh? the Pushkas team. But uh, yes, we've seen lost. them getting good results in Europe, for instance, against Red Star, Transosport, or even uh, Monaco at home. Difficulties for Leverkusen, uh, for Leverkusen here in Hungary, in Budapest? There could be, and we don't have to underestimate Ferenc Baros. Perhaps they are the weakest side of this 16. The final is in Budapest. Same same argument with Hungary. Often in international stage, we underestimate them a little bit, and they've overperformed. They've beaten in England, and they've done really well uh, recently, for example, in the National League. So not necessarily a foregone conclusion here, also because in the first leg, they both had chances. Uh, Ferenc Baros you know, created quite a lot. In the end, Radecki, the, the keeper of Leverkusen, uh, saved them, although Leverkusen dominated the uh, first half. Look, I think Leverkusen obviously are more in form. Three wins in a row. They are up to ninth. They won four of the last five, but only kept one clean sheet. So, Xavi Alonso is doing a good job. He inherited a difficult situation, made them a little bit uh, more uh, stable, if you like. Obviously, they got exciting players. He got Verse, uh, uh, he got Loz, Loz, maybe Schlick, Schick might be back. Frim Pong, seven goals and nine assists for the wing-back defender. So, for Leverkusen, we've got, obviously, very bright talent there. But don't discard a good result for Ferenc Baros. I'm going to go for a double chance. One X here, 186. Obviously, there. both results, either a win for Ferenc Baros by one goal or an X, would qualify Leverkusen. Hence, I like this double chance one X. And Leverkusen, they are in good form, by the way. They won at the weekend and they surprised us, as I said at the beginning, uh, against Monaco. Alvaro, would you go for Xavi Alonso's team? I think so, yeah. Uh, I'm going to back them scoring. And when I tell you why, because in three Europa League games, uh, Leverkusen has scored uh, six goals, an average of two per game. Uh, and in the last seven games, in all competitions, they have scored two goals or more in six games. So this is a side that, uh, as Daniele was saying, scores many goals. Uh, Daniele has uh, mentioned the individuals. The truth is that there are like three or four players uh, at Bayer Leverkusen who are capable of hitting uh, double digits in a season. And that's that's something that uh, we shouldn't overlook um, in the Europa League. I think that Bayer Leverkusen, uh, when they face a team like Manchester United or Arsenal or Juventus, obviously they will not only drop down their scoring levels, but also they may find it a little bit difficult um, to match the competitiveness of the other teams I mentioned. But when it comes to these kind of games and against a side like Ferenbaros, I'm going to back Bayer Leverkusen to score over 1.5 goals, which pays 183. And I know that Ferenbaros in the Europa League has been decent. They qualified, obviously, they beat Red Star, um, they beat Monaco away as well. But uh, right now they are suffering a little bit of a dip in their form. They haven't won at home in three games. And, um, you know, Leverkusen are arriving in this game in a very good uh, moment. So, you know, there is another market that I could back here. Mm, I think that this is the kind of game in which Leverkusen are not going to, ch to change their style dramatically. They will keep on attacking. But at some point, maybe Ferenc Baros has to change their style because I know that they prefer to sit tight and uh, sit deep and defend. But in the second half, if they see that, that they, they will get eliminated, they will have to attack more. Uh, so that may open up the game. Leverkusen may benefit from it. And Ferenc Baros, obviously, looking for a goal, they are more likely, likely to find a goal. So I'm going to go for the second half to have more goals than the first one. That pays 2.1. Well, and the same result has to be defended by Roma in San Sebastián. We have Real Sociedad Roma, 2-0 victory for Mourinho's Ben. We have uh, Roma, that is Dr. Jekyll in our Mr. Hyde, uh, lost 3-4 uh, against Asuelo. Terrible defending mistakes, terrible defending mistakes at the Olympico. And we have Real Sociedad in a very bad moment, Álvaro. In the key moment of the season, they are... But they are winless in the last five, only one victory in the last nine. Difficult to be optimistic with this Real Sociedad now. Yeah, they, definitely. I mean, if this was just a, a normal game, I could say, yeah, Real Sociedad can beat Roma. But Real Sociedad can come back against Roma 
that's very complicated. That's very difficult. On the basis of what we see with Real Sociedad right now, they are a side that defensively, they have lost a little bit their mojo. And then offensively, uh, none of their players are on fire right now. Sorloth is, uh, was never going to be uh, a very prolific striker for Real Sociedad. He offers a very good uh, physicality. The link-up game is decent, but then he doesn't score many. Uh, Oyarzabal He's still recovering in a way from his injury. And even though he's been playing for over a month, you can see that he's not the player he was. Uh, I think that uh, then players like Merino, for example, they have dropped down their level. And in fact, Mikel Merino had uh, the best chance for Real Sociedad in Roma. And he just uh, missed it in the second post. And that, if Merino had scored that one, that would have changed the game completely. Um, Real Sociedad are struggling with the scoring, as I say. And Kubo is probably the player who is offering more um, spark up front right now, even more than David Silva. Is this enough to come back against Roma? I don't think so. Especially if Roma has, player like, has players like Tammy Abraham or Dybala, but I'm going to single out Tammy Abraham here, who are so efficient when they are playing up front and they need very little chances to produce something uh, good uh, in the case of Danny Ab Tammy Abraham out of simplicity really because Tammy Abraham doesn't do flashy stuff but for example against Real Sociedad in a couple of movements he just dismantled the defense uh, completely so for this game I'm going to go for the following I think that Real Sociedad is going to attack more so the corners market is something that uh, catches my eye straight away. Over 1.5, uh, sorry, Asian Handicap corners minus 1.5 for Real Sociedad, 186. They will attack more. They will have more corners. Yeah, I can see this happening. And over 1.75 goals in the game, 160. I like this one. I think a Roma can score here and Real Sociedad is looking for goals as well. So yeah, I could stay here. But if Roma play like against Asuolo or against Cremonese, Dani, they might be in trouble. But that was very unlikely for Roma, really, to concede four and score three. I think you could put it down to a couple of factors there. They were tired after the, the, the cup game. To place a swallow after you are tired after a cup game is one of the worst opposition you can play in Italy. Because Sassuolo are good on the attack. They're going to go for it. And also, Sassuolo is a very weird team that because they are saved they, pretty much after 10 games in Serie A, they, you know they're going to be saved. So they play almost for nothing, but they're really dangerous and they got very quick players. So uh, they were able to cut through the middle with Fratesi, with Loriente, with Berardi. So Roma also in the first half didn't have Dybala, didn't have Pellegrini, didn't have Cristante. So in the end... They struggle and maybe they were a little bit nervous, Roma, because of the uh, situation that happened with Mourinho that first got the suspension, then he was rescinded, and then again, his obvious suspension has been confirmed again. So all the uh, talk and all the, 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 the environment, us against them, Mourinho doing the handcuff, did he help? Did he help the environment? I'm not okay. sure. Anyway, they look very nervous. Kumbulla was sent off as well. But, you know, against Real Sociedad, they were good. They were solid. Uh, they outplayed them. Uh, Real Sociedad had a few chances. And I think with Oyer Zabal and Bryce Mann that's starting this one, I think they will be more threatening. Look, uh, Real Sociedad only scored more than two goals in one of the last 11 games. I know they scored three against Atletico Bilbao earlier in the year. But they seem to me sometimes even too composed on the ball. They had a few chances for go for it on the counter attack and they came back. Roma, I think if Pellegrini, uh, Dybala, Ibram are playing, I think they're going to score here. Uh, again, they might not win it, but they might be able to manage a, a good result to go through. Both to score here for me, 2 18. All right, uh, and from Anoeta or Real Arena and Mourinho, we go to the hipster game of this Europa League, uh, Union saint gilois Union Berlin, with a three all in the first leg. Very entertaining game with the Belgian team taking the lead three times. They won uh, against the leader, uh, Genk, at the weekend, uh, whereas Union Berlin, remember that they kicked out, uh, for instance, Ajax from the competition. Danny, these teams met in the knockout the stages it was a draw no it was a victory for Union Berlin in Belgium 1-0 uh, what do you expect in this uh, 
Union Derby in Europe. I expect <laughs> goals. I expect goals as we saw in the first leg. So I'm going to go for an over 2.5 goals. Union San Gilouad were very clinical in front of goals in Berlin. Uh, and they managed to score three because they got players like Boniface who can really uh, take the chances. He's a team that likes to go for it. Uh, they play 3-5-2 formation, but they push the wingbacks uh, very high. And as I mentioned, Boniface, Adingra, These are good goal scorers. He's a side that has surprised us a lot, changed a lot in the summer, uh, sold Mitoma to Brighton, but still manages to produce uh, good football. And, you know, they won at the weekend 2-1 away at Leaders Gunk. They are only five points behind the leaders and plus 13 on Bruges. I think they're going to win the league union, you know. I think they're going to win the league in Belgium because... Last year, they finished second against Bruges. Bruges this year is not performing. They got a better squad. I think they're going to make it in, in, in the playoff. Um, they scored 14 goals in the Europa League. Uh, fourth for goals scored. And the Boniface, as I said, is a top scorer of the competition with Ra- Rashford, La Poussin, three assists. Union Berlin, um, they are decent, but uh, obviously... They did really well beating Ajax. Only one win in the last five Bundesliga. Only one win in the last seven in all competitions. So they're going to, I think, and they might be able to score a couple of goals here as well. Over 2.5 goals, 2 or 4. And the odds for Union Berlin to win or even double chance or Asian Handicap Zero are good. Uh, Alvaro, Union Berlin are the favorites for this one. Yeah, but uh, I don't know if I am in the position to back uh, Union Berlin uh, here a lot because I think that what we saw in the previous game was so random and so radically nice that is, uh, you know, very difficult to say. Yeah, I think that this side is uh, overly favorite against the uh, the other. In fact, Union San Gilua the other day was about to clinch a win at Berlin. So difficult to call this one. I think that the goals market is kind of the safer bet we can go here because Boniface is uh, in a great scoring form. Uh, he scored a brace uh, because uh, the last time uh, Royal Union San Gilua was a scoreless at home was against Union Berlin. Uh, coincidentally, in November, and because Union Berlin at the same time this season they have had a great, uh, a great uh, campaign, uh, losing against Bayern at the beginning of the month was obviously a blow, but a uh, expected blow. Um, but for example, in the weekend they show again uh, what they are capable of, just uh, drawing against Wolfsburg, and I think that this side is going to be trying to qualify for the Champions League and this is the very last, last minute of uh, the Bundesliga. So I'm going to go for both teams to score, 177, and over 2.5 goals, doubles up your bet. I could go for that one too. Perhaps we see these two teams in the Champions League group stages, by the way, next season. Why not uh, also doing a great European campaign? And to finish this video, as always, I learn. A lot from you guys in the Europa League. Let's go with your safe bet. Danny, first you. So my safe bet is Ferenc Varos Leverkusen over 1.5 goals that pays only 1.29. Indeed, a bit. uh, Very safe, very safe. And uh, Alvaro, yours? Safety is good. Uh, Arsenal to score over 1.5 goals, 1.5. Safety is good, but we also like uh, to take some risks. Uh, so <laughs> let's go with your act, Alvaro. Well, uh, I already told you what my risk was uh, in this uh, Europa League. Sektar Donetsk uh, to win their game. But anyway, my ACA will be Arsenal to score over 1.5 goals. Betis Manchester United over two goals. Asian Handicap Corners minus 1.5 for Real Sociedad. And a draw no bet for Juventus. Altogether, 6.41. And, for instance, if you place a bet on Shakhtar to win, it's even higher than the yeah. whole ACA. That's why with all one, only one game, you have a good risk going for Shakhtar. And, Dani, your ACA? Pioneer to win. Freiburg Juventus over 1.5 goals. Real Sociedad Roma over 1.5 goals. Union San Gilua. Union Berlin. Both team to score. Total odds, 6.50. Let's try to back uh, more ACAs in this month of March. In the meantime, of course, let's enjoy Europa League. Remember, guys, press the like, subscribe as always, and don't forget to tell us your tips. See you, Danny, Alvaro. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.